My mother cast a spell on me for success. From early childhood, she taught me to be perfect at everything. I was the best student in the class, headed the foundation for the supports of young artists, billed money for my late father. I could sing, dance, play the piano. I spoke five foreign languages at 18 years old. I knew manners, and I was often an honored guest at secular tricks. You have no room for error, she repeated like a prayer. One day, I went with her to her small homeland, Jeju Island. My super business mom strongly resisted the trip, but she couldn't refuse dear business partners who decided to spend a corporate weekend in the format of a house by the sea, a fire, and a bunch of barbecue food. Since they all took their children with them, I was also invited. All the way, listening from my mother how she doesn't want to return to the abyss in which she once lived. But we didn't yet know that this trip would reveal all the secrets of her former life and release the demons of the past. Already at the airport, my mother's luggage was lost. A woman took it away with her. We managed to trace her license plate number and follow it across half the island. Oh no, are you Huang Minet? Mom said at the sight of the one who stole her luggage. For the first time, I saw that woman who threw herself at my mother with a hug. In response, my mom stood like a pillar, trying to escape. We were introduced, and my mother, taking her suitcase, got into the car and left. I didn't ask questions about who she was or why she'd hugged her like that because I wasn't allowed to. So, we drove in silence. The barbecue started in the evening. During the height of preparation, a strange man entered our rented house. He offered to sell some dried squid. Nobody saw him except for me. He seemed kind and decent. I also saw that his left arm was missing, and I felt uneasy. He noticed my confusion. I have a daughter, five years younger than you. She thinks that I lost my arm while fishing. I once joked that it was bitten off by a shark. <laughs> Excuse me, but... This happened in my young days, because of my first love. So, don't do things you'll regret in the future. You sound like my mom. Huh. <laughs> well, your mom is smart. I took a couple of bunches of squid from him and he left. Even at the party, my mother kept a low profile and demanded manners. You have no right to be wrong, she repeated through gritted teeth. All the partners praised me and my mother, and she enjoyed it. My daughter doesn't go to parties or go out with friends. She chooses to study hard and work, like me, she proudly said. And then she suddenly froze. Where are those squids from? We didn't buy them, my mother asked, and I said that I'd bought them. She grabbed the bundle and threw them in the trash. I don't eat squid. Don't buy them again, okay? What a strange reaction. After dinner was over, I risked asking again who that woman was that hugged my mother. She abruptly dropped the plate from her hands, and it shattered. Don't ask questions. You know I don't allow it, my mother shouted. I regretted asking. Then we heard the doorbell ring. Opening it, I saw on the threshold that man with a squid. He said he forgot to return my change and came back to give me the money. I asked him to keep it for himself, and then he froze at the sight of my mother. Minna, is that you? Mom was silent and turned pale. You're still so beautiful, and this is your hour? daughter? Get out! You used to be more polite. Has money made you like this? None of your freaking business! She closed the door, and I then understood why he lost his arm. Why are you like this? Is this your ex-boyfriend? None of your business! You left him because he lost his arm. Yes, I don't need a disabled husband. How can he earn money if he has no arm? How can you say that? It all comes down to money for you, doesn't it? I got a slap in the face for my rudeness and ran out into the street. And the first thing I did was steal a car and go look for that woman with the luggage. I knew that she'd be able to tell me something very important about my mother. Something terrible, but necessary. And I wasn't mistaken. The woman sat on the coast and wept. I asked her what was wrong. Your mother is so cold towards me. We had not seen each other for so many years. I thought she'd be glad to see me, at least out of politeness. Please forgive her. She didn't mean it, I'm sure. She has a well-bred daughter. She raised a good child. She got up and left. I didn't even have the time to ask who she was. Then I found a photo diary left in her place. I opened it and saw those photos. It turned my whole world upside down. My hands were shaking and I started crying. In a couple of hours' time, my mom found me. She tried to order me to go home, but I just ignored her. Then I looked her straight in the eye and asked, Why have I never seen my father? I know he's dead, but who was he? You forbade me to talk about him. Mom tried to bear down on me, but it was useless. And then I threw a photo at her feet. 
A photo from their wedding? Their relationship? Did you really leave him because of his hand? Did you leave my father because he lost his arm? He's a simple squid seller, and his sister is a mediocre housewife. They don't have anything. What could they give us? And you decided to just drop everything and forget him? What about your family? You deprived me of him, mother, and not only him, you took everything from me. For what? Mom found herself a richer lover and left everything. She wanted to have a secure life right after my father lost his arm in the workplace. This was all because my mother really wanted some expensive dress for herself. And to please her, he went to work at the factory without sleeping for days. The machine cut off his hand, and my mother left him almost immediately. Cold, right? But worse is that I grew up in a lie, and now I can't even look at her. I decided to find my father again to be with him for a while. I just don't think I can live with my mom anymore. You're drawing too much attention to yourself. You should never show your face to people. You are my family curse. My father shouted at me. I am Elena, and as my father said, I'm too beautiful, which creates a lot of problems for the family. It brings losses and nothing more. Since childhood, I have been distinguished from other children by my special beauty. My face attracted attention like a magnet. Once, when people crowded around my stroller to take a closer look, my father's wallet was stolen with almost his entire salary. He was just beside himself with anger. Dad always said that my mother caused him the same problems, so she ran away and left me with him, and now he has to pay for their daughter. Oh God, forgive my sins and this child. She was born such a sinner. My father always said, calling out to heaven. He handed me a mask and glasses every day and ordered me to walk without taking them off, and made me constantly pray in order to atone for my sins of appearance. So I did, sincerely believing that I brought only trouble. One day I decided to skip church service simply because I saw free cupcake baking classes at the bakery. I wondered what they would do there. I immediately called my new friend, May, who I'd just met, to come with me. We baked cupcakes together and laughed. Doesn't my mask and glasses bother you? No, what's wrong with that? It's fun with you. Her laugh was contagious. Time passed unnoticed when suddenly I looked out the window and saw my angry father standing there. Dad punished me back at home, making me pray for several hours in a row on my knees. It was terrible. Dad prayed very loudly, asking God to forgive him for his naughty daughter. All my troubles come from you. Even wearing a mask, you managed to succumb to temptation and be the center of attention, he yelled. He then added that now our family was waiting for punishment, and God didn't make us wait long. Not long after, people came to kick us out of the house. I didn't understand why, because we did pay our bills. We had nowhere to go, so the church sheltered us. My dad was well known there, and so was I. One day I packed our things and went down to the laundromat, but on the way I ran into someone. Oh my god, he was such a handsome guy. He was there with his laundry too. We smiled at each other, and then I realized I wasn't wearing my mask and glasses. Oh no! The guy helped me up as I fell, and then he said, you're so beautiful. I'm Dylan. What's your name? Me? I... My name is Mel... Milena, what are you doing here? Where is your mask? Dad screamed and kicked the guy away and handed me my mask. What did I tell you about your face? Don't show it to anyone until you've been forgiven for your sins. Why, God, why? I covered my face in tears and my father left for church. He ordered me to finish the laundry and I saw May at the laundromat. What are you doing here? Is your father jealous of your beauty? I saw what happened outside. No, what are you? Uh, it's just, I'm cursed, that's all. How is your beautiful face related to a curse? Well, because of me, people steal money from my dad. They recently kicked us out of the house. Do you really think it's about you? Really, it is. Every time I get attention, something bad happens to my father. Can't this be disproven? How? May grabbed my hand and quickly ran. We ended up in the church hall where the service was still going on. She pushed me out there and took off my mask, and people froze. Everyone began to whisper about my beauty, and one woman said, What a beautiful child! She's like an angel! Among the crowd, I saw my father's angry face. That night, he locked me in my bedroom until late in the evening. Through the door, I yelled at May, blaming her for everything. I just want to prove that it's not about you, Milena, she said. How do you know, and how did you know where we go to church? Who are you? 
She didn't answer. That evening, Dad told me to go and pray, ask for forgiveness for my misdeeds. While praying, I made an important decision that would change my life once and for all. The next day, I was already sitting in the office of a plastic surgeon, asking him to make me ugly. At first, he laughed, but then he agreed to do it for free, considering my offer interesting. I had already entered the operating room when May came in. Let's go, she said. What? Why are you here? Faster, faster, I'll prove that you're not cursed. So she grabbed my arm and pulled me out of there by force. We then went to a strange private club. I went downstairs with May and saw my father sitting at a computer making online bets in the casino. What? Your father is a gambler. There's nothing to do with your face and a curse. He just squanders everything he earns. How did you know all this? Who are you anyway, May? I'm the priest's daughter. My father knew everything for a long time. I made him tell me before you could do something to harm yourself. So that's how the truth came out. I am not cursed. After saying goodbye to the mask, we talked to my father and the priest. Dad was ashamed and he apologized, promising to quit with the gambling. Well, and that guy Dylan? We began to talk again and everything seems to be fine.